here on the road in Texas. And we're in the Houston area, a little north of the city, in a place called Wood Forest. Beautiful, beautiful facility. And so I'm getting ready here to do a, a, little, um, a little practice session. I actually have the weekend off. Can you believe it? I played this morning with uh, my host and uh, Tom, and he's a member here, and uh, just a, a gorgeous golf course. They have 27 holes, beautiful clubhouse, nice facilities. So um, what we're going to be talking about today is in your setup, you need to think dynamically before you enter the zone of setup. So if I have my targets here, there's a wonderful target, a blue post right there, right behind this brown and white post that's 165 yards. And I'm just firing some shots over that post but with my 7-iron. And so I have my inter intermediate point right there in front, and I'm already feeling my release around the brown post and black and back to blue. So I'm getting ready to feel a nice snap in that direction. So if you if you haven't seen many of my videos yet, uh, I invite you to go see throwing the club, Sean Clement throwing the club straight, Sean Clement. So that's a really awesome action. I want you to look at a, a video called Fencing for Power, so a good slash. And then look at a really nice training series with the grass whip, so grass whip training series. Just brilliant task-oriented releases in the direction we want the ball to go. If the ball is your target, you are going to be toast, as I'm going to demonstrate right now. So I'm getting ready to go that way over this spot. I get lined up. I play the ball a smidgen back because I'm hitting my little draw and I'm getting ready to release through the ball and over that right edge of that spot in that direction. Now, if I release at the ball, watch what happens. Look where the club passes. There's full extension because I'm going after the ball. So if I go full extension straight at the ball, I'm going to dig crazy. I'm going to hit it really fat or I'm going to shank it. So, or I'm going to have to early extend. I'm going to have to stand up and lose my posture. All of these things, that can of worms that, you know, we talk about is because you're getting, you know, you're, you're delivering there. Now, if I'm getting ready to deliver there, I'm going to feel the need to, you know, reach back. Yeah, that feels like I can go there. Problem is, you going at the ball is like me saying to you, go to your car. And you go, okay, go to the car. You get into the car and you do nothing. Well, that's not going to help you. So if I say, well, you're at, your, you're at your golf course, go home. Well, now the car has a purpose, is to take you home. This is the car. Home is over there in that flight plan. And how do you get over there into that flight plan? And most of you think that the peak speed of the swing is down there where the ball is. That couldn't be farther from the truth. If I have, and then, yeah, you, they're going to say, well, scientifically, the accelerometers are saying that peak speed's at the bottom. Well, that's because the ball slows contact or slows the club down, ball, grass, ground. So the, the peak speed is at the bottom when you're, you're meeting a ball. But let's say at a... Uh, my my sword in my hands. I got a little bamboo shoot. The beginning of the cut is here. The end of the cut is there. And there's the release of the anatomy. If I'm playing hockey, I'm collecting the puck from here, releasing the puck out there. If I'm throwing the club, throwing the club over there, peak speed's over there. So peak speed cannot be at the bottom. There's my spot. Now, see, I'm getting ready to deliver to the right edge of that spot into that moving picture. So now I can gather and release through into that picture. And that started right on the right edge of that brown post and is drawing beautifully back to that blue post. One groove low. Perfect. So I can make birdie with that. That is the definition of what through the ball is. So I'm actually collecting the ball here. So watch in slow motion as that club comes down. 
See that? My right arm is still bent. If I extend at the ball, uh-oh, that's way too far. Or I'm way too close. I extend at the target. Collect. Release. So notice full extension of my right arm is there. And then you got that release. And then you have the release pulling you into the thing. Through means. So when I get set up, there are four elements that I need in order to go in that direction. Ball position. So if the ball's too far forward, I feel the need to lunge after it to get it to start there. No good. If the ball's too far back, I got to reach back to get it to start there. No good. If I got the right ball position, it feels like it wants to go right edge automatically. If I'm too far, I can't go that way. I have to go that way. If I'm too close, I can't go that way. I can't go that way. We're good. So now it feels like I can swing to the right edge of that with ease and velocity. So what's it going to feel like when I whip through? So if I do a little practice swing above the ball right here. Nice slash. Felt the peak speed out there and I saw that I missed the ball by about that much. That's a great reference now. So I get lower. If I make the same swing, it feels like I'm going to be cutting the dandelion stem, that being the dandelion. So what's it feel like when I swing in that direction? Ah, yeah, yeah, it feels about like that. So again, right edge of the post, stayed right edge. So terrific miss if the if I'm starting right side, you know, right, right center of the green, back to the center of the green, well, it's at the right side of the green. So now, if I want to do a little fade, I'm going to stay in that direction, play the ball a hair more forward, and stay left of that brown post. So I see the space here, and I see a flight that's left of the brown post. Left of brown, left of brown. Oh, yeah. And that's going to hug right up against that blue post. Just perfect. Beautiful little bounce. Like so <clears throat> that's what it means to dynamically set up into your picture. It's not, OK, I got my intermediate point right there. I know how to line up. And then I line myself up. And then I'm getting ready to hit the ball. Yeah, that feels good. I can go hit the ball from there. Now that's gone. So when that leaves, your weight shift, your hips clearing are in grave danger. They're, they're going to be eliminated. So if you look at a <clears throat> skipping the stone, if I skip a stone on water in that direction, notice how my weight shifted, my hips cleared, my arm went in that direction. If I take this and throw it here, See the difference? So throwing there is perfect for over the top. So when you're doing an over the top swing and your focus is on the ball, you actually swung correctly. Isn't that great? You're not defective. <laughs> so if you're swinging toward the target, skip a stone out there. So notice how that cannot be over the top. So the stone the extension leading into my hands get that intermediate point one more time draw now i'm going to skip the stone to the right of that intermediate point to the right of that brown post ho oh, ho there it is <laughs> that was fun <laughs> that was very flush so skipping a stone for me is a fantastic analogy for those of you who are lead hand dominant, if you're left-handed playing right-handed golf, you're looking for a frisbee throw. You're looking for a backhand sword slash. So I hope you enjoyed that. Stick with us. Wisdom in golf will get you to where you need to go without mental gymnastics. All the best.